We need your support. Click the like buttons below. Now on to the video. Welcome to readtheticket.com. Today we're going to talk about Dow and cycles and we're going to help explain how Charles Nenner called a bear market in the, in the stock market cycle. Now I have no association with Charles Nenner. I have not subscribed to his work. I've never met the guy. I've only just watched his videos on YouTube and I know which cycles he's referring to because I've been following him for some time because I'm in the cycle world and so is he. So I can, if he's talking about a cycle in gold, silver, whatever it is, I can scan the data for the correct cycle because we have in our series, in our software package, a cycle final spectrum and I can find the cycles that I know he's referring to that makes up his bigger, makes up his world. So the Dow, there's a powerful 2600, zero zero, it's 2600 cycle, and that's what we're going to look at first. There's also another cycle around the 900. We're going to look at the big, the big one. So what it does, a cycle must fit the price action. So we've got a high here, high there, and we just learnt we've got a high here. So we've got a high there, high there, and another high here. So we got a high here as well, another high there, and a high there, there's about a high there. And you can see how these highs are correlating pretty good because my our tools to find the cycle worked out pretty good. Now there's a bit of a divergence in here because the cycle went down but price went up because of the strength, okay? That's why there's such a shallow dip. High there, high there, high there, high there. It doesn't have to marry perfectly, it's part of the trick. High there, high there. And obviously you can do the lows just as easy. Low low, low, oops, come here low, low divergence there, see how the uh, cycle low is higher up, low, low, bit of a squidgy low because it's rather flat up, oops, flat, say that's the low, 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 same here, very strong trend, we got a low there, very shallow low, so it doesn't go down, see, now we get a bit of a, bit of move in the data, it's a low, low, and because that was such a fast move, that's pretty much the low there. Oh, sorry, there. Now, this is this sharp move down is going to form a low. It may stop tomorrow, and it may go on for another six to twelve months. Okay, so it may do a two thousand eight where the low forms rather quickly, or it may grind down like two thousand and uh, two thousand two thousand three spike down, bounce up, spike down. So the low the low could be here or it could be over there. My guess is that um, most people who have been working uh, age between the age of 70 and the age uh, started work around um, this area here so this is the first time we may be getting a, a, a recession actually or some sort of um, down slump that lasts a bit longer than a year so it wouldn't, it's, about, it's due for about time for a double dipper or some sort of stagnation down there because our previous generation had multiple recessions in the 80s, recessions in the Vietnam War and obviously recessions down here in the um, pre-war and obviously the 20s. So this will be this generation's first double dipper or multi-year slump so that would be uh, unfortunately normal and predictive. So I'm suspecting a whopper here. So as you can see here, price trended up. And everyone was wondering when it was going to run out. And, but the cycles gave you a, a, a time frame when it would run out. So that's a long cycle. Now we're going to look at the cycle. This is the 2600. And we're going to look at the cycle a little bit closer. We're going to look at the, nine, uh, the 880 or the 900 really. So we'll just go there. Just to change the colour so we can see it. And the red line is actually um, it's the same as the blue line, it fits the data very, very well, but it's just faster because I want to get in close, so I'm just gonna take less take less daily data so I can focus on it. Right, so here's the red. We're gonna look at the red cycle. Um what have we got? Boom, high there, high there, high there, high there, boom, 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 right, a low there, boom, 
low here, which probably refers to that one, which is a bit late. It could be that. Low there. Divergence, remember, perfect low there. Now this low here, nasty piece of work it is, has come late. We never really got a low in here, see? I was looking for a low between there and there. I was thinking maybe it could be that, right? So that was a bit of a... That was a bit of a tease, so that quite frankly could have been that low there, just like it was over here. But now we're getting a low for our 900, or 880, 900 cycle. It's coming in now. Okay? So this this price action could continue on easy till the end of 20, 2021, where we get a bounce. We might, might go down like this. Uh, there we go. This is worst case scenario, of course. So, so it goes, keep on going down, and any of the year it turns up and goes like that. Or, oh, yes, you know, you can go up straight away and down. I'm expecting an ABC move, I'm not expecting a V reversal. I've explained in the other video is that Wall Street wants the engineer a bounce so they can get short to make profits. This, this high volatility smash down has allowed nobody to get short in size. Everyone was long in size from this cause. Excuse me. Everybody was long in size in this course with leverage. Some smart money got out as was showed by the NYC debt. But most people were long and they couldn't really get out quick enough. So Wall Street want to recover their losses and they want to engineer a bounce. But quite frankly, they may not get a bounce. So at the moment, when you're doing cycles, you like your low to come early or on time. And if it comes late, sometimes it's just nasty. All right. You don't want them all. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so that's how cycles work. We've got two powerful cycles here. But you knew ahead of time that you knew coming into 2019. So if I go back down here and I change my colors. Boom, boom. I change my colors. I I knew f full well that this cause, because I'm a wife guy, wife off guy, this cause was so long in the tooth with cycles probably peaking that anything going up here had to be any, sorry I knew because the cycle was peaking down here the cycle was peaking that cause and the relative effect was getting more risky compared to all these other causes here's a cause here cause here all right this cause here turning cycle this cause here turning cycle so no matter what the fundamentals we even had the fundamentals and that sort of stuff I we people in the cycle world, including Mr. Nina, knew that for it to go, you know, price can do what it wants, but if it had to go up there, uh, it had to be um, the fundamentals had to be strong behind it to counteract that cycle. But as we knew, it was the most riskiest markup out of this whole trend, and it proved to be so. And one feather fell on the pile that turned it all. No one knew it'd be this dip, okay? But um, here was not the place to load up, but all the um, Momentum investors, they were too scared to get in here. You know, those in the know got in here. They might have got in there, added some more in there, got really confident here. They went super duper, let's go crazy, load up big because, you know, it was proved four times before. And thinking it was going to go up there because why wouldn't it? The Fed's got the Fed's got the, um, the, the back. But the cycle followers realized it was coming in the long end of the tooth based on the data, based on re how repetitive, repetitive the cycles are, is that the confidence of the markup from this cause was not well founded by, founded by all these momentum traders. Because momentum traders win, 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 and lose big. Alright? Like property, property developers, quite frankly. Anyway, that's what cycles do. Cycles are one of the few tools out there that can forecast ahead of time a danger year or a danger period where something could um, upset the apple cart and change things. It just puts you in a frame of mind to say, right, you know, let's be careful here. Um, play safe or lower your position side. Lower your position size, sorry. And especially, I mean, if you can get one dominant cycle, great. If you can get two dominant cycles, and if you can prove it over a number of um, years that the cycle work, that's got to be a bit of a slot than a slot machine at Las Vegas, don't you think? 
So if you go work, if your working life started around here, and you still been working there, and you had you had these cycles in your investing career, which some people do, of course, and all we had to do is try and manage the cycles relative to the fundamentals, it would have kept you out of the pain. Now, who's to say it's not going to continue on for the next uh, 10 to 15, 20 years? So that's how we watch the cycles. We'll also add on to this chart some technical tools. We've got our DPO, Hearst DPO. Load the 900 in there. And I'll just make it easy for you so I can explain it. Right, so what this does, it puts, it puts our favorite little red cycle. There's a red cycle there. It's the shorter one. Puts it down there and puts price against it. Okay? As you can see here, cycle and price worked well. Cycle and price at the low was um, too strong for the for the um, cycle low. Okay. See that part there was mirroring this action here. Okay. So they have to take into account the fundamentals and Wyckoff logic and power of the volume price and volume. This was perfect how it came down and forms the low and goes up. That's the elections. So this one here was a bit of a tease. Unfortunately, it was real nasty. That rally there was particularly weak, and I was really worried about it with reference to how poorly the NYSC margin had not confirmed that move. And hence, we're getting our low now. As you take into account, see how far that red line's gone down? See? Bang. So are we going to get a big, strong bounce like this? Or are we going to get something horrible like this? Oops, scroll down. So we either going to get a big bounce. Boom, 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 boom. I'll give it some sort of ABC wave. Or we're just going to get a wobble and smash down, I don't know, 12,000, say. So. Wouldn't that be one of the history books? Can't say that's off the table. This market went up on buybacks and passive investing. They were the bid. Those two are now broken and not working. So the only bid is the Fed trying to motivate all the scared punters to get back in the market. And as we know, redemptions are piling up. People want to get out by the end of March, and then if they can't get out, they'll be getting out by the end of June. So quite frankly, I'm going to take the words of Jesse Livermore. Never buy one of these fast moves off the top. This is the top. That's the fast move. He said stay away from it because you never know where it ends. That's not a falling knife, that's a falling bloody truck. So, stay out of that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I highly advise to get cycles in your mythology. So methodology, sorry. And, um, we can do that quite well. Help find the cycles in your data, whether it's a stock or an index or futures, or an ETF. So, thanks for watching.